Hi there, this is Ranjit from tech2bus.com and in this video we are going to do the full review for this Micromax A90S. I had already done the unboxing for this phone and this has to be one of the most premium handset from Micromax and it supports a dual core processor. As I said earlier, I have already done the unboxing for this so you can check out that video to get a general overview about this phone and I want to thank Faisal Communications for providing this unit for review and uh, the pricing quoted on the box is 16000 uh, 499 but Faisal Communications quoted me a street price of around 12,500. I've also given the link of Flipkart so you can check out the current online price for the same and uh, again I was pretty impressed by this handset and it puts a 4.3 inch super AMOLED screen so as you can see the screen is pretty vibrant and the viewing angles are also uh, great uh, and I tested this phone even outdoors and outdoors also the legibility is pretty good as it also has an auto brightness sensor so you can just leave it to auto brightness and it adjusts the brightness out of the box uh, let me show you the android version that it comes with is the uh, ics that's uh, version 4.0.4 and uh, i did not add any what do you say uh, micro sd card you can add a micro sd card to the same but the internal storage is divided in two parts the first one is uh, uh, 1 gb and the other is the phone storage that's around 2 gb so as you can add a micro sd card i don't think so storage will be a problem on this phone and coming back to the screen it's a 4.3 inch screen and the resolution is 480 by 800 and again the text is pretty crisp and i like the screen very much it's pretty vibrant as you can see let me now quickly give you a physical overview of the phone on the top we have this 3.5 mm headphone jack and we have this micro usb slot that'll be used for charging and syncing and we have this door over here and it's pretty uh, hard uh, you can slide it out and close it like this and if we move to this end we have the power button over here and again it's nicely styled nothing else over here and the styling of the phone is also really good and if you look here uh, we have the microphone and we also have an indent to open the back cover and on this end we have the again the volume rocker moving towards the back it has an 8 megapixel camera and led flash and i have to say the photographs that i took with this are pretty good and if you compare it with other budget android phones i would say the camera on this is excellent also it can do video recording uh, and it's limited to 720p but again it's qgp format again we have the micromax logo over here and an opening for the speakerphone and it's adequately loud i would say Coming towards the front, again, we have just a slab of glass, if you notice. Let me close the screen. And we also have a front-facing VGA camera. We have the nice speaker grill and uh, the voice calls were uh, good. No complaints regarding the, uh, the same. We have the ambient light sensor, the proximity sensor. And if you notice, we don't have any physical buttons. The buttons are part of the screen, as you can see, uh, the back, home, and the ICS-style multitasking tray, like we have seen in Galaxy Nexus. I personally like this, but it's a personal preference. And that gives an elegant look to the phone. And I have to say, when I first uh, unboxed this phone, I was really impressed by the looks. It looks like a very premium handset. And also the build quality is very good because uh, in my testing, I didn't face any creaking noise or anything like that. And even with the battery, the, uh, it's, the phone is very comfortable and light to hold. So no complaints regarding the build quality. Microsoft Max has done a great job with this phone. Uh, moving to uh, the phone, Micromax did modify the ICS a little bit. They have added a desktop launcher. And as you can see, we do get uh, a different effects like this. You can do that. And also, by default, you get five home screens, but you do get this gesture by which you can add up to nine home screens if you want like this. So that's again a nice thing. And you can delete extra home screens if you want with the same. And also, this is the app tray. Again, nothing special. And to add the widgets, you just hold to the screen. And here, you can just go to this widget icon. And from here, you can add the widgets. For example, let's add the photo gallery widget here. And I just place it. And it says uh, to, uh, what do you say, uh, choose an album. And let's uh, use this one, the photo album. And it should have added the widget. As you can see, it added the widget. So that's how you add widgets. Again. Uh, let me talk about the processor. It's powered by one gigahertz dual core processor. That's a MediaTek processor that uh, I have also seen in the Lenovo uh, P700i that I reviewed earlier. And in my day-to-day -day, uh, usage, the performance is snappy, no issues. RAM provided on the phone is 512 MB. But uh, personally, I just do not like this, what do you say, the desktop, uh, what do you say, launcher. It would have been great if uh, Micro Max would have used the stock ICS launcher. 
and we also get this qu quick toggle tray and it's easy from here to toggle between gps wi-fi etc so that's nice coming to the uh, battery as this is a dual sim phone let me open the back cover we can open it from here uh, it has a 1600 milliampere battery and for all my testing and the first sim is 3g enabled and the second one is 2g and we can also add a micro sd card here as you can see i did not add it the battery is a 1600 milliampere battery and for all my testing i just used the single sim and with the single sim uh it was i was able to last it one full working day but if you use two sims you might have to charge it twice a day so again um no complaints regarding the battery but if you are a heavy user uh you might have to charge it twice Typical uh, Android the standard battery life, I would say. Nothing spectacular, nothing bad. And now as we are connected to our uh, Wi-Fi network, let me also just uh, quickly fire up the web browser. And it's going to the news.com website. And it's going to the mobile version. And, uh, and let me just switch on to request the desktop site. Now it's loading the desktop version and this news.com is a pretty uh, heavy uh, website, especially the desktop version. And let's try the pinch gesture now. And as you can see with heavy websites like this, the pinch gesture is good, but it's not silky smooth, I would say. And let's try to open up a story. Uh, for example, let's open the story. But with most of the generic normal websites, uh, everything was very smooth. I'll show you that also. Uh, let it load the story first. Again, it's a pretty heavy website, I would say. And uh, it's almost loaded the page now. And let's try the pinch gesture again. As you can see, it's not silky smooth, but does the job. You do get this double tap and it zooms in and zooms out. And kinetic scrolling is pretty smooth, I would say. Uh, let's also go to our website, that's tech2bus.com. And our site is not very heavy and if you noticed how quickly it loaded it. Not a lot of JavaScript and stuff like that. And it's pretty smooth. And let's try the pinch gesture here also. And here, as you can see, it's a lot smoother. So in terms of web browsing, you shouldn't have a problem. Let's also try to play back a video that's embedded because I have a video that's embedded. Uh, let's change the orientation. That's also pretty quick. And let's try to play back this video. It does play it back, but Hi there, this is from and as you can see, the speaker is pretty loud. I'm lowering the volume. The speakerphone volume is really loud. And as you can see, it can play back videos without any issues. Also, you do get the YouTube app and uh, it also plays videos without any issues uh, in that app. Also, it has access to the full uh, Play Store, so you can download whatever app you would like. For example, yeah, this is the Play Store, and you can download thousands of apps from this. And let's test the video playback also. And to do the same, I'm going to uh, stream some stuff from uh, my NAS. This is my NAS. And let's look at the library. Yes, let's go to the videos. And let's uh, play back a trailer. Do notice that I'm streaming this from my NAS, so I, uh, I'm going to show you. I was really also impressed with the Wi-Fi performance. Uh, so this is going to be streamed from my NAS. And I'm going to use the MX player. I downloaded that. And I'm going to start over again. And this is a 720p clip. And uh, I would say use the software uh, decoding. With MX player, had good experience with the software encoding. And if you notice how well it plays, and look at the blacks because of the super amoled screen it looks really vibrant and as you can see this it plays this video without any issues without any stutter or anything like that so let me pause the same i also tried uh, to play what do you say 1080p content and it could play that but uh, uh, the video playback was not very smooth it was skipping a few frames so i would say for the smoothest video playback restrict it up to 720p so no issues regarding videos up to 720p with this phone now, as this comes with uh, 512 MB of RAM, let me kill all these apps. You can uh, get to this tray and swipe away. And let me also uh, kill all the apps that are running. And we have killed it. We'll kill this also. And now I just want to show you the Android system info and the free RAM that is available. 
uh, it's showing as 162 MB but if you do a clean uh, boot it goes to about 185 MB and uh, with that I was uh, in general performance the phone was pretty snappy and uh, I would say it Micromax has done a good job I did not face many stutters with the phone and um, most of the time the performance was flawless so again even with 512 MB of RAM uh, the phone is responsive and uh, pretty nice to operate uh, moving to it's the camera, the rear facing camera is an 8 megapixel shooter with a LED flash and the front facing camera is a VGA camera and you can do Skype calling and also I did not test it, uh, you can also do video 3G video calls with the same because we have an icon but I personally did not test that. I did a Skype call and I was able to make Skype calls with the same. Now let's talk about the rear facing camera that's an 8 megapixel shooter and I was really impressed with this one and uh, we do get the standard features like tap to focus we also have the zoom feature uh, it does opt uh, what do you say uh, digital zoom like this and it also does take the snaps fairly quickly if you noticed it took it fairly quickly but uh, we can also toggle the flash now i'm forcing the flash and uh, and as you can see this is with the forced flash but i would say just keep this setting to auto and it does a good job and I did take a lot of photographs in varying light conditions. Uh, for example, this I took in my office and all these shots. I'll show you these in the full screen so you can get a better idea. And outdoors, I have to say, the photographs come out to be pretty uh, vibrant and uh, it impressed me. And I have to say in budget-oriented Android phones, uh, the camera on this one has to be the best. And it can also take videos up to 720p uh, and I did take a few videos but I have to say the video quality is not very sharp. Uh, it is I would say good enough but not that great. The video is not very sharp but uh, if you're taking static pictures they are pretty good. Now coming to the benchmarks first let us uh, fire this Nina Mac benchmark which tests the GPU performance. I also ran it earlier and i'm getting an average score of about 23 24 which is actually nothing great nothing bad a uh, very mediocre score in my opinion but even with that score i was able to play casual games like angry birds uh, temple run even 3d games like what do you say uh dead trigger and uh, i'll also show you the shadow run multiplayer game with the same and again as you can see nothing spectacular it's dipping to about 14 15 with heavy scenes and it's almost done now and as you can see we got a score of 23.8 fps let me publish the same and again as you can see the gpu provided on this phone is a power vr sgx 531 so that's for the gpu test let me kill the same i also uh, ran the quadrant i'll show you the scores and uh, let us go to system info and as you can see uh, it's running the MT6577 chipset and it's a dual core processor clocked at 1 gigahertz and also Micromax did provide a lot of sensors like accelerometer, magnetic sensor, orientation sensor, proximity and light sensor so that they did a good job regarding that and uh, I just finished running the quadrant benchmark and we got a score of 2505 uh, let me give you a breakup. Total is 2505. Out of that, the CPU got a score of 4108. Memory is 2857. IO is 3214. 2D is 467. And 3D is 1880. So that's for the quadrant benchmark. Uh, let's also run one more benchmark. That's ANTTU benchmark. And uh, I'm just going to run this benchmark and, and come back because this does take quite a while to do the same. And we're going to run the entire benchmark. And the benchmarking is done and we got a score of 6186 and uh, let me show you the detailed scores also and as you can see you can just pause the screen to get a overview regarding the same so that's for the benchmarking let me kill this now uh, it can also do some decent gaming and to show you the same let me first load this temple run game again do note the uh, vibrancy because of the super AMOLED screen. The colors are really uh, vibrant and uh, due to the heavy contrast. Again, if you notice, it loaded the game pretty quickly. This temple run does take quite a while to load. I 
and as you can see it plays this game without any issues and I died so that's for temple run and let me also show you one more game that's uh, uh, this one shadow gun dead zone that's the multiplayer version and it does take quite a while to load this game so I'm just gonna skip so it's almost loaded so let's play the game and I'm gonna spawn and as you can see we are spawning now and this is our character and as you can see I'm just gonna move around with the character a little bit and as you can see it's a pretty 3d uh, intensive game and then also it's pretty smooth I don't see any skipping of frames or anything like that let me shoot and as you can see again no issues so yes this phone can play back quite a few what do you say 3d games without any issues so that's for the shadow run let me get out also before uh, I conclude my review let me also show you the multi touch points and I ran it earlier also and it registers just three multi touch points uh, I would have expected uh, to it to have five but it's just three um, also it does have a magnetic compass and let me show you the same it works and as you can see the compass works uh, before I end the review let me also show you the messaging app again uh, Micromax did modify it a little bit also as you can see the dialer they have modified it and uh, uh, First let me show you the speakerphone quality. Let's try dial this one two three And let me put it on speakerphone So as you can see uh, the speakerphone is adequately loud, but if you keep it at max volume it distorts a little bit uh, but uh, other than that no issues uh, let me also show you this is the SMS app and uh, they did modify it a little bit and we do get this predictive text at the top this is a test and we also get this microphone icon so you can voice do voice dictation let's test the same this is a test for the voice dictation again it works but I did make a few mistakes so that's for that let me get out and also let's change the orientation and see if uh, it works yes uh, the keyboard works also in this orientation so that's pretty nice and let me get out and let's kill this also let me show you the wi-fi performance and the wi-fi performance for this phone was very good and uh, in one area on my terrace where i generally do not get any wi-fi performance with most of the android phones i was able to get the same and let's test uh, my internet connection speed. I'm on a 20 Mbps internet connection and as you can see, this phone can easily max it out. We are getting a speed of around 21 Mbps and upload of about 12 to 14 Mbps. So again, in terms of Wi-Fi performance also, uh, it was excellent. Uh, now coming to the uh, my opinion about the phone, I'm really impressed with this uh, Micromax A90s. Micromax has done a great job. The Super AMOLED screen is great and the viewing angles as you can see are also great. It's a very sleek handset and it looks great. Among the budget Android handsets I have to say this has to be one of the most good looking handset and also the camera performance uh, of the 8 megapixel rear facing camera is also excellent. Uh, now coming to one downside I noticed is the SAR rating. If you see on the box, the SAR rating at head is 1.55 and the body is 0.92. And for the head, the value of 1.55 is a little bit high to my liking. Apart from that, uh, this is an excellent phone from Micromax. Uh, and uh, the performance is also great. The dual core uh, does the job. And in my testing, the phone was very fluid to use. Uh, the only thing I do not like is the stock, what do you say, uh, the skin that they have used but as it's android you can easily change the same so what do i feel about this phone this phone sells in india for approximately about 12,500 or so and if we compare it to other budget android phones the performance is very similar to the Celcon a200 or the lenovo p700i that i reviewed earlier and certainly this is a lot more expensive but for that additional price you get that gorgeous super amlet screen 
uh, that you don't get in any other budget or Android phone. And the styling, it's again premium styling. And I have to say the eight megapixel camera is among the best compared to the budget Android phone. So again, uh, this uh, uh, product gets a big thumbs up from me. That's it for now. I hope this video review was helpful. If it was helpful, I'll appreciate if you can click on the like button given below. That's it for now. This is Ranjit from tech2bus.com and I hope to see you in my next video.